What's going on, Five Shot fam? AJ here with another transfer daily video. I brought in Mark with this one because there's lots to talk about. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube. So Atlanta United made their end of season roster moves. And first up, it's the options exercise on Julian Gressel and Leandro Gonzalez Perez. And uh, I mean, that wasn't much of a surprise no, for sure. But uh, I think some relief, of, especially from the fan base, especially in terms of Gressel. Yeah, um, I mean. You know. They've, they've, they've exercised his option. I think there's still a little bit of negotiating to be done in that regard. Yeah, I mean, he, I think definitely still wants a new contract, yeah. higher wages, and uh, yeah, he's still waiting on that. Uh, but before we get into the, the weeds on that bit, yeah. uh, also midfielder Mo Adams was also, uh, and Andrew Carlton, which yeah. may have been a surprise for some, sure. but uh, back to the Mo Adams thing, it really, I think, uh, shows the prioritization yes. in the expansion draft yeah. that they protected him. And so, yeah, his option being exercised is not a surprise then. Right, yeah. but, and then, um, you know, yeah, we need the numbers in midfield and then with some other midfielders that are out of contract, I think it makes sense to retain young guy, a lot of yeah. young, exactly, lot of potential. potential upside, yeah, especially to play that position of a holding midfielder. So. Right, and then Andrew Carlton, uh, some are maligning him, I think some are still high on him and yeah. sees the potential and yes, he really had come on at the end of the season with right. the twos. Right. And so, uh, yeah, and was being selected in some of the 18s by Frank DeBoer, and so right. yeah, I, I think you know to just probably decline his contract would have been a waste, probably. Yeah. So they probably at least want to, you know, exercise that option and then get something for him if they were to make a move. But yeah. uh, I think they see maybe some, you know, hopefully some. I uh, think he still retains a little bit of value. I think MLS teams, if he were available, would be interested in him, and he's still what 20, 21, you know, like yeah, so I, I, still pretty. I think he's <laughs> on the more the potential side yeah. than. If having been or been not realized, right? So. I think he's going to go into his 20, uh, 20 year old season. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, or he's turning 20 next season. Yeah, there we go. But anyway, uh, so back to Gressel mm -hmm. and negotiating another contract, his uh, a new contract that would hopefully be more lucrative for him, right. He has been uh, kind of in the media saying that, uh, you know, essentially, and I'll, I'll say uh, in quote, uh, he said, obviously different thoughts go through your head and different ideas come to mind. Uh, I'm sure that there are other teams looking at me. I've never really heard anything specific. I don't know if anyone had has approached LA United. We only stopped playing a week ago, and that was when uh, they, he was saying that. Uh, if there are Cubs interested, I, or clubs interested, I'm happy to listen. Um, so, I mean, kind of a, you know, kind of downtone maybe yeah. in, uh, in what he's saying, but uh, he has also mentioned that he's, you know, very wanting to, to stay in Atlanta. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting that contract right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just think, yeah, it's a little, it's a bit of hedging bets, you know, because yeah, I think that, yeah, he's downplaying how he feels, you know, just to, I guess, in the face of negotiations. Right. And also from uh, the club side of it, you know, they, they, I think, want to keep him as well, which is why they exercise this option. But uh, as, you know, Boca Negro goes on to talk about, uh, the CBA, the impending CBA is a big part of it. We still don't know what uh, the financial rules, what the roster restrictions or lack thereof are going to be next season. And so a lot of that's going to dictate uh, the kind of contract that Julian gets and really and truly the kind of offseason that we have overall. Right. And uh, But Boca did say today that uh, Julian Gressel is a priority for Atlanta United. So that is very encouraging to yeah. hear. Uh, and I think also using his words, uh, Gressel's words of wanting to be a priority with Atlanta United. <laughs> Uh, that was probably wise by Boca. Uh, yeah. Good technical directing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but also he noted that LGP is not actually in the final year of his contract. He actually has two options. So an option this year <laughs> and an option next year. And then apparently LGP didn't even know that as well, that he had two option years. He only thought he had one more year. Right. That, you know, it was a possibility that he, uh, you know, would pretty much have to negotiate another contract. And so uh, that is also a good thing, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. But you Weird know. MLS rules aside, yeah. No, yeah. I think it's uh, definitely a relief though that LGP's coming back, especially right. with uh, yeah uh, Parkhurst leaving. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of rests on the shoulders of LGP and Miles Rock. 
Robinson in that position. Yeah, and we essentially only have two se senior center backs on the squad at the moment. So yes, right. uh, yes, there's, as mentioned in the podcast, there are <clears throat> lots and lots of uh, kind of moves to be made to kind of fill out the depth of the roster. For Absolutely, sure. yeah. But um, yeah, also uh, the players that were declining contract options were Jose Hernandez, Flo Pogba, Chris Goslin, Justin Miram, and Patrick Oconquo. Um, yeah, notably here also is, of course, Flo Pogba and Justin Miram. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll get to, you know, the really deep into them in a second. But I think what's also interesting is that Chris Goslin and Patrick Oconquo, uh, two of our homegrowns, mm -hmm. they're the two uh, first two homegrowns that are essentially let go part of our right. academy. and. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a sad thing. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Goslin, pampered by too many injuries, just re really didn't see a lot of playing time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, that's where, I mean, he's a buddy with Andrew Carlson, yeah. that as well. That's that's kind of breaking up the uh, the the Georgia-based band a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, but and I think, too, with a team like Atlanta United, you know, we've been uh, near at the top of the league in our existence. And so I think breaking into the Atlanta United team is always going to be difficult. Yeah. And so I, I think for these guys, I wouldn't be surprised to see them uh, pop up in USL, possibly on another MLS roster. Right. You know, it's just a case of, uh, they're just at that age where they've had to make a decision on their careers. And mm -hmm. in this case, I'm letting United made a decision for them, so. Right. And Patrick Raquanco uh, saw some time with the Charleston Battery as well as the, the twos this year. Maybe just didn't show enough of the end product that uh, the front office wanted. And so they're unfortunate casualties. Right. But um, yeah, to Flo Pogba, who was exposed in the expansion draft, wasn't chosen mm -hmm. uh, is still under 30 years old and so it is uh, a surprise that I mean you know he had played well uh, mm -hmm. I think for most of the the spells that he had with uh, you know I, I think on the first team it was I think very positive yeah, and I so, think so yeah. you know filled in very nicely and started at times played multiple positions yeah I, mean, I think uh, you know a great depth piece and it's a kind of a, a strange thing maybe you know he's looking to go to Europe right uh, go back to and Book know. Negro also mentioned saving money and specifically in talking about Flo Pogba you know yeah, yeah Flo Pogba and Justin Miram probably right. because right. yeah he's on uh, Justin Miram's on about six hundred thirty thousand um, dollars and so right. that's a pretty high wage he's 30 years old now and uh, he's also a guy that um, you know he just kind of uh, learned a new position mm -hmm. played really well in it for uh, I think the first bit of it kind of maybe sputtered a little bit at the end maybe it was because of the fatigue and other issues yeah, yeah. but um, no but I would agree great depth piece and uh, we should also mention that uh, we learned that they are trying to negotiate with Miram. I think, yeah, the mm -hmm. salary was a sticking point. And so if they can bring him back for cheaper, it seems like they'd be open to that. So right. uh, we'll just have to see. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, Boca did say that, I mean, you know, everything that, uh, you know, how well Miram played is on the table. Uh, it's just a matter of, I think they want a slightly lower salary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also to know what they can actually pay him with the CBA. <laughs> right. So 30-year-old, yeah. uh, I mean, you know, you give him a two-year contract, you have no idea how he's going to continue performing right, so right. Um, yeah and then also uh, you know you have guys that uh, pretty much were out of contract as well here and so Mikey Ambrose we kind of knew from over the weekend and his IG posts and whatnot uh, Breck Shea obviously with the injury yeah. Alec Can and uh, Jeff Lorenowitz were uh, also out of contract yeah. but they are being uh, offered contracts yeah and then there's Kevin Kratz who yeah I mean you know a guy who it has a special place in our hearts for the sure. free kicks that he uh, he scored against yeah. Montreal yeah. Impact, like two in 15 minutes. Right. But uh, yeah, look, all in all, he hasn't really seen the pitch as much as yeah. uh, you know maybe his contract warrants. Yeah. Uh, you know, injured and, for most of the season. Yeah, and yeah, I think midfield is an area that definitely needs to be addressed, and so maybe it's one of those cases where you free up some room by you know just letting him go, and maybe you can address it in the market. Right. And so yeah, there is uh, kind of a waiver deadline coming up as well, and so he will go through that process as well uh, but uh, you know it also today's news I mean it is a barrage yeah if uh, if you do you didn't... see why he brought me on yeah exactly <laughs> there's a lot to talk about and if uh, you know if it was just me talking to you on all of it I mean I don't know I mean it's it's oh my god <laughs> that thinking about all that overwhelms me but right. uh, so next bit of news is that Emerson Hyman and his loan uh, 
pretty much LA United are looking to extend it, yeah. which is a good thing. And uh, I think because, yeah, he has, in uh, the time when he came in, he came in running and it was, uh, I mean, yeah, kind of a, a beautiful sight to see, I think, when... Mm. Uh, you know, he kind of uh, ingratiated himself into the roster really well. Mm -hmm. uh, got into the 11 pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, scored and, some big goals. He scored against yeah. Club America. He scored the winner against San Jose, I believe I'm remembering that correctly. Right. And so, yeah. Um, and, you know, I think most of all, it was he earned the, the, uh, the trust of DeBoer pretty quickly. Right. You know, he was uh, chosen ahead of some players, kind mm -hmm. of controversially. But I think, you know, he clearly fit the profile that's uh right that fractal board really wants yeah. in his system and so yeah. uh that is a good thing there and i mean yeah you know maybe some people are thinking uh he probably won't be able to replicate what nagby uh can do i mean i, I agree as yeah. well it's yeah. he he won't re be a direct replacement for what nagby can can do but i think he brings more goals he probably brings a little bit uh a little bit even more work rate somehow but um uh, because that dude doesn't stop running uh once he's on the pitch but yeah. um but yeah, I mean, does he offer the control of Nagby? No, he doesn't. So right. uh, it'll, it'll, he will pretty much play the position what Nagby played, but in terms of what he can do, maybe not the same. But uh, in terms of his contract, it could rise if we do buy him. Right. So that is a thing. That's, yeah, because, yeah, then I guess, you know, is he a TAM level player? Is he a DP level player? I don't think he's a DP level player. Right. right. So yeah, I think it goes back to the CBA. You know, what? whatever Atlanta United can yeah. dole out. You know, I think a lot of that would be used on, on Hyman. Right. It, a lot of it is kind of riding on the CBA being completed. And, uh, yeah, Carlos Bocanegra is saying that it's really kind of, um, you know, a thing where it's maybe handcuffing what he can do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a huge part of kind of t what happened today is a lot of these moves are contingent on what happens. And yeah. that really kind of stinks because, I mean, he's pretty much in limbo. On some of these players, because yeah. he, he has said also that there is no kind of go plan and like handshake deal with any of these players of like oh well you know if the if the CBA doesn't get completed and then suddenly does uh, there's not like oh well a flurry of like okay yeah well you know right well, I was gonna sign you anyway right so you know come on <laughs> yeah come on yeah 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 and uh, it kind of sucks I <laughs> yeah, mean yeah. but you know still a lot of time in the uh, the off season still so. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be okay. But um, other bits of news is that, yeah, I mean, in terms of those players that were, you know, uh, if their options were declined or if they were out of contract, uh, we almost have about $3 million saved here. Yeah. Uh, now, some of it might go back to Lorenowitz and Alakan and yeah. Miram and maybe Heinemann as well. But um, I think at the moment we have a lot to play with, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we also have you know the Nagby allocation money, so right. that's good. And, and a new international spot as well. Yeah. So you know, uh, and of, of course, as always, don't worry about international spots with LA United. Right. But uh, but yeah, and so uh, moving on from that, it's also the news that Barco and PT are uh, expected to be back next mm -hmm. season. Yeah. And I mean, unless. They get blown away by a deal or something like that. Right, but right, right. I think not, that's, yeah. Not a surprise, I think, for either of us. I know maybe there was a suggestion that PD might leave, you know, mm -hmm. after his uh, social experience in his first season. But mm -hmm. I think, as I've been pretty consistent in saying, I just think that logistically it's really difficult to sell PD and bring in a new DP and, you know, with everything else that United already has to do. Yeah. And I think PD has shown enough to show that he is obviously a good player. It's just a matter of the right fit. So. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that LA United can really get embroiled in a huge transfer saga right now. And right. Be, uh, you know, bid uh, kind of uh, denied and then going for another bid and all this type of stuff. Right. Uh, it's really, they have to pretty much fill out the roster. I mean, that's, uh, so yeah, the DPs, being set in place probably makes the most sense for the stability, probably. Uh, another kind of uh, very encouraging news is also that Tito Vishalba, uh, it has uh, been kind of given been given a vote of confidence by Carlos Bocanegra, saying that he's been a top player since uh, the club started, mm -hmm. and that, you know, whether any formation that he should and could still play a big part uh, in the team going forward, and so, yeah, I mean, and that he still has a contract. Yeah, that's the so. yeah another yeah mysterious one. I was we were obviously mistaken or something. I don't know. Apparently, he has like a couple more years left, even. But uh, but no, I mean, I'm glad to see that he's still on the roster. I think that we do need him, especially uh, if we do use like a four two three one. 
Yeah. Uh, somebody play the left wing. I don't really think we have that on the roster outside yeah. of Tito, to be honest. Yeah, and he has been injured a lot this season, and so that was a big factor in right. his downturn in numbers. But yeah. uh, when he has been healthy and he played most of the season, you you see a lot of numbers and a lot of big goals and big moments. So especially um, when he came on as a sub, I mean, hell, he was a sub in our last match. He probably should have come on sooner in that match, to yeah. be honest. But yeah, so he obviously still. I think he still has a role in. I don't know, maybe it's a case of DeBoer kind of reviewing the season and saying, you know what, maybe Tito does have something to offer me. So. Right. And uh, and maybe it's so, hopefully there's not a clash in opinions about uh, Tito Vichalba between Frank DeBoer yes. and uh, Carlos Bocanegra, but maybe there is, and you know, maybe they're looking to move him. Who knows? This offseason could get sillier. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I think second to last bit is that, uh, yeah, uh, Frank DeBoer also mentioned about Dr. Nagby saying that it's going to be next in possible to replace him yeah. uh, and he said that he in quote well I will never panic um, and he'll just try to solve the midfield problem in a different way yeah. with uh, other players using their other gifts and talents as their weapons yeah. uh, instead of you know trying to out and out replace Dante Nagby. Yeah I mean like I do think we have a solid midfield in terms of like Rometty, uh, Mo Adams, uh, Hyman. I think we need like one midfielder to kind of, I guess, pull it together, mm -hmm. or you know, or maybe like kind of build the yeah. Well, midfield I, I around, think we need, you need know? a little like, bit more control, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but and, uh, but I think we have fine pieces around them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, also, uh, De Boer mentioned <clears throat> that he will try to continue the Atlanta United mentality of attacking. Yeah. Uh, and so hopefully that is the case. Hopefully there is not any more uh, pragmatic, really defensive tactics. I, at this point, this should be a clash the between the coach and the players. I mean, I think yeah. everyone should be on the same page yeah. right now. You yeah, because he was asked uh, today in the media like what he thought he did well this season. And one of the things he said was that he thought that he listened to the players well. And that's, I think, a massive thing because, you know, you want your your uh, star performers to perform for you, you probably need to see at least what they're thinking. Yeah. And so that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, and so last bit of the day is that the preseason will be played in Guadalajara, Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, I think, uh, you know, hope that uh, maybe it's not going to be as rainy as what they experienced in California Jeez, last season. Yeah, right, right, right. But it's, uh, you know, uh, you never know what could happen. I mean, yeah. California really was going through a drought, and then all of a sudden, you know, in that preseason, it just rained every single day. Right. So, but uh, hopefully it is sunnier days in Mexico. It's a little bit further down south, I believe. Yeah, right? and I but, believe it's uh, also so. a high altitude uh, destination, so, you know, that could help with the fitness. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's especially, yeah, if you're, you know, pretty much, you're working out in the mountains, essentially, you know, you're going to be, you know, it's it's like the, let's get really nerdy here. And, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's get really nerdy here. Yeah. Uh, you know, so like Dragon Ball Z, right? Yeah, okay, you know, like sure. Goku, he's like, you know, up in the, you know, the thing, and he's like working out on like zero gravity. Right. That's like the exact same kind of mindset, right? Anyway, end nerdy thing. And uh, so, you know, hopefully by really, I think, uh, kind of pushing themselves harder in the preseason, yeah. they will be. I think more ready for the the season ahead but yeah. um yeah so that pretty much is it for the transfer daily video thank you guys so much for watching remember to subscribe if you haven't already smash that like button and share this video because it really does help us a lot and for mark i'm aj thank you guys so much for watching